How's life? Today I'm going to talk about something unusual and sad and difficult and unfortunately something I know a lot about. And this is especially dedicated to some dear friends from Canada who have gone through a similar experience. When we, you, when we lose our children, when we lose the young. When I lost my son almost a year ago, he was 15, it was incredibly, incredibly sad, quite devastating, I have to say. And one of the first things that I found was that we didn't have a word for it. We have a word for people who lose their parents, we have a word for people who lose their spouse, but we didn't have a word for people who lose a young one in the family. And so I got my friends to work on this because I realized as a psychologist, as a person who works with the mind every day, that the most frightening things, the ghosts in life, the things that haunt you, are the things that cannot be named. And my dear friends came up with a word in Sanskrit to talk about those who have lost a young one, a child, and it's Santanhara. Some of us are Santanhara. We have known a child, we have known what it is to lose a child. And it's such a taboo in modern society that we don't even have a word for it. So we are living in a situation that doesn't really exist in the modern world. I've gone for that word because I think it can comfort us a lot to know that this happens to many, many people. And for the last year I have been reading and talking to other people who have lost a child and many of them have found that one of the most awful things is that it's unnameable, it's unspeakable. It's something that we cannot even conceive so we don't have a word for it. During this whole year there have been the negative moments, the things that I no longer did. I no longer cooked for him, I no longer bought clothes for him, I no longer paid school fees, I no longer did a number of things that I would have done normally. And it was, it was all that missing, all that missing, and now what do I do with what I don't do anymore? The process of mourning is these things, thinking them, missing them, feeling angry about them, feeling profoundly lost in your new world without the person that you have lost, especially because the young ones should never go. We don't expect it to happen. We don't expect the young ones to ever be there in that place where we should be first. We expect the young ones to be our inheritance. We expect them to walk the, the earth after we have gone. And in a way they are our immortality. So when they leave, we are no longer immortal. And funny enough, we are more mortal than ever because as Janis Joplin sang in Bobby McGee, freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. When you have lost something that is very, very important to you, you also find yourself in a place of creativity, in an enormous empty space. And if you can accept that space where you are, if you can accept that this has happened, that you no longer have what you had, and you can endure the pain, and you can be patient with yourself and let yourself cry and suffer, without denying it, without resisting, without saying, no, I don't want it to happen. If you can endure that, and if you can say, yes, it's happened, and I am the person who is living this, slowly, it will start filling with memories of life, and with experiences of life, and with experiences of beauty. We will feel that life is still life. And even if the young person has left and they're no longer there, one of the things that I find most beautiful is that you can remember that that person only died one day. One day they died, but the rest of their life they were alive. And as the beautiful song by Henry Purcell says, when I am laid in earth, remember me, remember me, but forget my fate. If we can do this service to our loved ones, our young loved ones, they will live inside us. Uh, we can talk to them. I talk to my son a lot. Uh, he had a very funny sense of humor. And I did too. And we used to share those things a lot. 
uh, during the days, I sometimes say, look at that. This is one of the things you like. And I go to the movies and I, and I watch The Lord of the Rings, the last one, and I say, you didn't expect that, did you? And he says to me in his way, it's pretty good, but you know, they could have made one movie of all of these. <laughs> and then um, I get into songwriting and I write songs about him. And this brings him to life in a certain way. I remember that he told me one day, Mom, you really don't sing very well, you know. <laughs> you should get some lessons and your learning curve will go up drastically. And so I started singing again and, and I started singing very intensively and now I'm composing my own songs that have everything to do with this morning process. You can see that I'm very sad and you can hear my voice and you feel that it's trembling and of course it is. Of course it is and it should be and it will be for a long time. And this is the state I'm in for many hours a day. But it's not the only thing I do. It's not the only part of me that is uh, in this world. When somebody dies and there's a catastrophe, especially your young ones, you must ask yourself, am I going to live? Am I going to really live? Have I decided to be amongst the living or am I going to be a ghost, a zombie? Am I completely involved in life? I am. I'm completely involved in life. And feeling sadness is a part of life and it's perfectly acceptable, perfectly respectable and dignified. I cry sometimes during the day and I give myself time to cry. I work, I sing, I write my songs, I read a book, I enjoy my dog, I enjoy my friends. I'm not only in mourning, I will be in mourning for all my life because you can never ever stop mourning for somebody that you have loved who is a young one because it's so unnatural. And in, in fact, you never stop mourning anybody who goes because it's also a way of being with them. But mourning doesn't mean sadness all the time. It means some sadness. And this is something that I'd like you to see. When you love somebody, when you love somebody, you put a little bit of your soul into them and you dip it into their soul. And when they die, you take it out and somehow it's been bathed in their essence. And the mourning process is when you take it back and you put it inside yourself again. This takes time and it takes a lot of courage and mainly it takes a lot of love for life. So to my dear friends, you who have lost, you who are Santanhara like me, embrace life. Your child would have wanted that. And remember them and forget their fate.